Yo, man, we always talk about keeping the 100 and, you know, standing your ground and standing on what you say. Uh, this is for 5150 fans. Uh, I've been watching 5150 for about four or five years now. Corey Holcomb's show, kind of like a spinoff from when he used to be through the foxhole with Jamie Foxx and them. And it's him and Darlene Ortiz and Zoe Williams and, you know, reoccurring guests. Dope show. And uh, 5150 Nation was kind of disappointed this week because Corey admitted on his show Tuesday night that he ran into Stephen A. Smith. Now, if anybody knows anything, Stephen A. Smith, Corey been calling out Stephen A. Smith for years. You know, calling him about, calling him a sellout, Uncle Tom, sucker. Uh, his real problem with Stephen A. Smith really was when Stephen A. Smith kind of took a swipe at black men when the whole Ray Rice situation went down and then Stephen A uh, apologized <laughs> on fucking ESPN. Um, like the, you know, like, like most niggas do who are company men. So NBA All-Star Weekend was in Chicago, Corey's hometown. Corey was out there. Of course, Stephen A was out there. He works for ESPN. He was covering the All-Star festivities. So Corey <laughs> is doing stand-up out there. That's what Corey's hometown Corey on his show was like, yo, y'all not going to believe D who I ran into and I had to, you know, squash it. And she was like, well, who? Because you, you've called out so many people. And that's why we love 5150 because, you know, you get your, your your intelligence from Zoe and your, your information from Darlene. But you also get the comedy factor from Corey. And we enjoy watching Corey uh, clown other comedians that might be joke thieves like Alex Thomas or G thing. But we also like to see Corey call out the Hollywood elites. It's funny. And Corey feeds dust. He feeds into that shit. But Corey has a pattern of running into people that he calls out aggressively. And then when he sees them, his energy shifts. And it's usually, uh, yo, that shit ain't even nothing, man. Cause like recently he had ran into Damon Williams, a comedian he came up with in Chicago had been calling him a joke thief and a sucker all his years. And then they ran into each other at John Witherspoon's funeral, rest in peace, and they squashed it. And not only did they squash it, later on that same evening, he had Damon Williams on his show, 5150, and he had Adele Givens and Miss Laura. Beautiful episode, but Corey has a pattern of doing this shit. So Corey sees Stephen A. Smith at this restaurant in Chicago, according to him, and he notices Stephen A., <laughs> And he ducks. He admitted he ducked Stephen A. Smith. He didn't want to fucking talk to him. After all that shit he said. And that's why I'm like, whoa, Corey ducking Stephen A. Smith? Like, really, nigga? And, and Stephen A., while I disagree with a lot of his character traits and what he does and some of the shit he says, I got to give Stephen A. credit. As a man, he had fucking, he got up and approached Corey. And he was like, hey, Corey. Hey, Corey. You know, he walked up on Corey. This is what Corey's saying. I think the only reason Corey even went on, went out of his way to say this is because they took a picture and Corey didn't want this shit to resurface online without people knowing what really went down. You know, he goes, I had to, because Corey had to do a lot to explain it. And the chat room goons and a lot of people was going in on Corey like, yo, bro, you got to keep your energy. Like, I don't expect two men in their, you know, late 40s, early 50s to actually fight. I mean, if you've seen that video with Stephen A. Smith uh, boxing, about a month ago, trust me, I don't even want to see him fight, but Corey completely backed down, and he, he claims he still feels the way he felt, and he don't take his criticism back, but, you know, the fact that you ducked this man, after all that shit you talk, you know, <laughs> and it's like, entertainment world is not but so big, most of these niggas, they gonna run into each other if they don't anyway, airports, parties, networking events, they all run into each other, you know, uh, it, it's as much as Corey calls out Airy Spears and calls him the gooey raccoon. I'm pretty sure if they ran into each other, the energy was going to shift. Uh, I really think Corey just does that because you, you got to know your clientele. He knows that's what the fans want. We like to see Corey stare up shit and pick on people in Hollywood elites and all kind of shit like that. So he just gives us what we want to hear. But I don't think he really has a problem with these people. And bottom line, him and him and Stephen A. squashed it, and they took a picture together. <laughs> and Corey was holding a piece of chicken in his hand, <laughs> and, and you could hear the disappointment from Zoe, Zoe Williams, and Zoe was like, "Really? Like, come on, bro! Like, what the fuck?" And it's not that I have a problem seeing two men squash their beef; it's the fact that he ducked this nigga. You know what I mean? Now, 
I think Corey and Corey gets compared a lot to, to Patrice O'Neal, um, and I think Patrice we didn't we didn't get to see what Patrice would have done because Patrice died early. But one of Patrice's Patrice was someone who was hell. He held himself back because he was so pro righteous and he was always uh, he just wasn't gonna play Hollywood's politic game to rise and get to that megastar level. And Corey, similar to Patrice, is not a product of his talent. Corey's held himself back because he will beef with elites. He won't play the game. He ain't going to put on a dress. You know the whole thing. And I remember one of Patrice's last interviews on Opie and Anthony, he said he felt like a fucking idiot because he felt like he wasted so many years of his career trying to be righteous. And he said, and I quote, if you if you have any integrity in this game, you're a fucking idiot <laughs> because the most righteous people in this game don't make it that far. The the prosperous people who are the megastars are the sellouts, the suckers, the whatever. They they don't have any integrity. And I don't know if Patrice was going towards that road, but we'll never know. He passed. I think Corey at 49, 50, I think Corey's starting to kind of like give up on the fight. And Corey's like, you know what? Maybe I do need to rub elbows with some of these niggas. You know, Corey's getting up there in age. Most of his money comes from doing shows. Who the fuck want to be doing shows 45 weeks out the year, two, three nights out the week, touring the country? You know, you want to make what they call easy money. Like, Jamie Foxx don't got to do shows to make money anymore. He got movies. He got Hollywood in his back pocket. Eddie Murphy ain't done a stand-up special in 30 fucking years. You know, he he, he switched to the movies. Because as a comedian, you stand-up shouldn't be the end-all, be-all. Eventually, you want to do something else other than just stand-up. And I think Corey's at that point where he's like, man, maybe I need to, you know, uh, cut out some of this rah-rah shit. But nonetheless, like I say, Corey runs into these people <laughs> and he fucking switches up his 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 attitude. Like he called out Alex Smith recently. I mean, Alex Thomas recently. Wouldn't surprise me if he ran into Alex Thomas and the whole shift energy shifts. But Corey has a a, a fucking pattern of doing this shit now. If you don't want to fucking, you know, what's the point of calling these motherfuckers out? If <laughs> Every time you see them, you know, you don't stand on shit that you say on your show. I mean, I get it. It's entertainment. You want to feed the fans, but you're starting to look like a hypocrite. And it's really getting to a point where you can't really take Corey's criticism of these other entertainers that serious. I wouldn't be surprised if him and Jamie ran into each other and squashed it, you know, because he's been shitting on Jamie Foxx for years <laughs> now. By the grace of Godfrey, Godfrey brought Tiffany Haddish up there, and Corey and Tiffany go back. But you could tell Corey had a groupie moment, and he, he you know, he, he that's, she's one of the few people he refuses to keep it real about, as far as her being an industry plant and her really not being that naturally funny. She bombed, by the way, on the All Star Road. She was horrible. Um, she, he won't never really be honest about her, and he won't never keep it a hundred about Kevin Hart, even though they haven't had a conversation in like ten years. Because he, he knows that they're the elites right now. And he wants to do business with them at some point, if it ever happens. But I think Corey's at that point where he's willing to, you know, probably, uh, I don't want to say sell out. But he's 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 at that point where he's probably willing to make some changes. Because he's been in Hollywood for a while now. And until he somewhat joins the fraternity or starts uh, shaking hands and kissing babies, he gonna be where he at. And <laughs> when you get up in age, who the fuck wanna be doing all that running around to pay the bills? So I was just disappointed that he ducked Stephen A. And he even admitted he ducked him. Yeah, <laughs> you know he he did all that shit you talking. You scared to confront this man? Like, come on, dog. So yeah, fifty one fifty fans was like niggas wasn't trying to hear that shit. <laughs> you know. I'm not saying I'm not going to stop listening to the show. It's just but when I hear Corey call somebody out, even if it's funny, it just go through one ear and go out the other. I'm like, all right, bro. Like, yeah, you, you ain't going to say nothing when you see these niggas. But it is what it is, man. But, yeah, I got to give Stephen A credit for being a man and, and stepping to Corey because he could have easily acted like he didn't see him. But Stephen A was like, nah, you know, what's good? <laughs> Stephen A checked him, and he did it in the shot. He did it in Corey's backyard. Like, come on, man. That's just, these industry niggas is funny, dog. <laughs>